belong to my teacher, Master Yoda. If you choose the armor, you'll return to your friend, the Mandalorian. But if you choose the lightsaber, you will be the first student in my academy. Which do you choose? Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my Mandalorian Season 3 video about Grogu, why he left Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy so fast. It seems like he wasn't there that long. John Favreau clarified some of this, and it has a lot to do with the way that they're using Grogu on the show and the way that he's sort of a nexus point between the Mandalorian culture and the Jedi culture, and Mando has the Darksaber. He's trying to bring together all the Mandalorians. There are also some practical concerns, too, with the way they move the story through each of the different series, because John Favreau, who came from the Marvel movies, like he did the first two Iron Man movies, he executive produced the first three Avengers movies through Avengers Endgame, and he's Happy Hogan in the Spider-Man movies. He also explained how he modeled a lot of the way the Mandalorian series works with all the crossovers in that part of the timeline. We call it the Mandoverse, technically, but it's Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, the Skeleton Crew series, all taking place in a shared universe around that time period. In the way time passes. So there were a couple surprises. Like he wasn't with Luke Skywalker for the amount of time that people thought that he was with Luke Skywalker. The Mandalorian season three episodes are starting this week. Of course, I'll do videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get them all. It is going to be crazy. I'll do a special giveaway in all my episode videos too, like I've done in previous seasons. But here's the big surprise that Jon Favreau revealed about the Mandalorian timeline after Return of the Jedi and how quickly things are moving along since season one. You know, he is definitely somebody who has spent time in both worlds. And uh, we know that he started off uh, earlier in the Jedi Temple. We've seen flashbacks to that. And then we know that he's been rescued and spent many years with the Mandalorian, went back with, with Luke. Now we've been two years apart from him there training. What's interesting is that as he chooses to return to his friend, the Mandalorian, because he's developed an attachment, it's interesting how that echoes in a way Luke's path when he was, you know, was drawn to the attachment to his friends and how that helped shape the future. And what is the relationship of those two civilizations? Mm -hmm. Because the, the Mandalorian armor, as Dave has taught me, uh, uh -oh. you know, is developed to counteract all of the natural abilities that the Jedi had and made it a more level playing field. So we have a lot to draw from, both from the Clone Wars, where they both cooperated and fought. And we also have ancient history, as we saw in games and an extended universe. So in that clip, John Favreau reveals it's actually been many years since the events of season one. He's kind of vague when he says many years. I think he means to say four to five years. And he confirms that Grogu was with Luke Skywalker training at his Jedi Academy for two years, which is way longer than I think people assume because it seemed like he was only there for a hot minute. And generally, the seasons of the Mandalorian series and all these spinoffs are meant to happen the same way that the Marvel movies and the Marvel Disney Plus series move in relatively close to real time, one right after the other. Season one came in 2019. Season three episodes are coming in 2023. So it's about four years. It's probably been a little bit longer than that in the universe of the Mandalorian and Star Wars right now. Grogu left with Luke Skywalker to begin his Jedi training, and Mando had left with the Darksaber to find the armor and his former covert to Mandalorians. Because he still has the Darksaber, that effectively gives him a claim to the throne of their home planet Mandalore and the title of Mandalore, which is what they call the ruler of their people at any given time. And Grogu had been training with Luke Skywalker on the planet where he eventually creates his Jedi Temple, his academy that we've seen in the movies, Luke barely having just begun to construct the actual physical temple itself and he'd intended for Grogu to become his very first student at the new Jedi Academy. And even though Ahsoka Tano was also at the Jedi Academy, they weren't trying to say that she was going to become an instructor at the Academy. She was just there for a brief stay to meet with Luke Skywalker and see Grogu begin his training and then go off on her own mission that we'll cover during the Ahsoka episodes in that series next year. Just because Luke Skywalker's beginning his new Jedi Academy doesn't mean that Ahsoka is coming back to the Jedi Order. And that's meant to dovetail with the reason why Grogu decided to leave the Jedi Order and go back to Mando. It was a great episode. It featured a lot of Easter eggs and callbacks to Luke Skywalker's Jedi training with Yoda during Empire Strikes Back. And a lot of the exact same scenes. Running around in the little Yoda-sized backpack, learning to levitate, balancing himself using the Force while doing multiple things at the same time. Him learning to dodge the training drone's blaster fire was more of a reference to Yoda's Force jumping and lightsaber fighting skills during Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith and for Obi-Wan Kenobi's training of Luke during A New Hope, including the Size Matters Not speech. This is them showing you some of the things that Grogu can do. We saw some of his skills during The Mandalorian Season 2, like force choking and throwing around the stormtroopers. So he is very powerful, and Luke was helping him unlock a lot of his prior training with the Jedi that he'd suppressed. 
is John Favreau said Grogu training with Luke Skywalker then choosing to leave is meant to be a parallel for Luke Skywalker training with Yoda in Empire Strikes Back then getting the force vision of his friends in trying to leave to go save them. And even though Grogu didn't get a force vision of Mando being in trouble, during the episode they try to show you how Ahsoka had to counsel Mando about Jedi attachment issues and remind him what it did to Anakin Skywalker leading to him becoming Darth Vader going to the dark side of the force. She basically explained why she and Luke Skywalker were trying to do everything they could to avoid repeating that mistake and at the end of the episode they show Grogu is just as preoccupied missing Mando not focusing on his training as much as he should. Which is also meant to be another parallel for Anakin Skywalker. Yoda had his own version of this speech during Empire Strikes Back, speaking about Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker. Like his father, never his mind on where he was, hmm? what he was doing. That's what Ahsoka's comment about Anakin Skywalker meant when she told Luke, much like your father. The double meaning was that she was saying that Luke was much like his father, trying to train a Padawan for the first time like Ahsoka was Anakin's first Padawan. But Ahsoka was also telling Luke that she sees a lot of the same energy in Grogu that she saw in Anakin Skywalker, which is kind of a warning. And this dovetails with a few reasons why they had Grogu leave Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy in his training and go back to Mando. Within the story they're using Grogu as a sort of inflection point like a nexus point between Mandalorian culture and Jedi culture and they're trying to use Mando with the Darksaber which is a Jedi artifact created by the first Mandalorian Jedi to unite all the Mandalorians the same way their ancestor Tar Vizsla the very first Mandalorian Jedi used the Darksaber in his abilities his Jedi training to unite all their people. So even though Mando is being viewed as the person to unite all these people or have to do it really it's Grogu that the show is going to use to help unite all these different Mandalorians. Also there's the idea that Grogu will become a Mandalorian Jedi just like Tar Vizsla just not biologically a Mandalorian. The whole idea with Mandalorians like Din Djarin is that he wasn't born a Mandalorian he chose to become one and it sounds like that's what they're doing with Grogu he will choose to be part of the Mandalorians with Mando like a family with Mando. Even the armorer basically called him Grogu's father you are as his father for now. And in a bigger lore kind of way it's all about the mistakes of the Jedi and how their dogma set them up to fail during the prequels. Like we talk about the fall of the Jedi and as evil as Emperor Palpatine and the Sith were, a lot of the things that the Jedi wound up doing a lot of their teachings were actually wrong just in a completely different direction. George Lucas talked a lot about this about Anakin Skywalker bringing balance to the force and as much as that was about getting rid of the Emperor during Return of the Jedi bringing balance to the force was also about getting rid of the Jedi Order as it existed when Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. The idea that even though the Jedi themselves weren't evil a lot of their teachings were wrong. At the end of the episode Luke Skywalker forces Grogu to make the choice between the Mandalorian and the Jedi choose the Mandalorian's Beskar armor chainmail suit or choose Yoda's lightsaber in the path of the Jedi. If he chooses the armor he forsakes the path of the Jedi as Luke Skywalker sees it and if he chooses Yoda's lightsaber Luke is effectively saying you won't ever see the Mandalorian again. It will take you many years to master the ways of the force and you may never see the Mandalorian again. A lot of you were commenting about how it's lame for Luke to make him choose like why make him choose why can't he have both the armor and the lightsaber. And the reason why they actually wrote it this way why they had Luke Skywalker do this is to show you how Luke is repeating a lot of the same mistakes as the Jedi Order with their rigid dogma about attachments and he's sort of setting up his Jedi Academy to eventually fail. Remember during episode 5 when Mando had the Darksaber and was talking to the armor about Grogu and she told him the same speech about Jedi dogma and attachments. Mando argued that their philosophy as Mandalorians was almost the opposite it was all about attachment and protecting your clan protecting your family. That is the opposite of our creed. Loyalty and solidarity are the way. And you have to remember that Mando is not on the path to the dark side or anything like he is a little bit darker as a character but they want you to think that he's walking the correct path like he might make some short term mistakes but in the larger sense of things he's on the right path whereas Luke Skywalker is just repeating the same mistakes of the old Jedi Order. We saw how that ended not well. And while Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni aren't retconning any of the new Star Wars movies or anything they are preemptively sidestepping them using Grogu. And here's how they're doing that. Luke helped him unlock his previous Jedi training making him much more powerful giving him access to more memories that he can continue to relearn Jedi skills from. So he's just beginning to do that now and because Yoda's species lives for up to 900 years or so Grogu's only a little over 50 now he's got over 800 years to develop his own version of a new Jedi Order that's totally different from the old Jedi Order. 
So in choosing the Beskar armor, they're basically saying Grogu is going to reject the old Jedi ways that Luke Skywalker is hyping up in this episode. So eventually someday when Mando dies either of old age or he dies in some big battle and Grogu goes his own way, focusing more on deepening his connection with the Force, he'll start a new Jedi Order of his own. And because this is more than 50 plus years in the future we're probably talking about here, unless Mando gets killed really soon, that puts Grogu way past the events of the new Star Wars movies, effectively sidestepping everything that happened during the new movies. Grogu off on his own with the help of Force Ghost Yoda, maybe counseling him or anybody that's still alive at that point, maybe Force Ghost Ahsoka. Pretty much all the Jedi that you know right now would be Force Ghost by that point. Right now, Grogu is the only character that we know of that we've seen in the context of the show and the movies who would still be alive a long time in the future creating a new different Jedi Academy, one that doesn't focus so much on absolutes or attachment issues. There were a lot of jokes about this too after Luke Skywalker made him choose. Why is he making him choose only a Sith deal on absolutes? If you haven't seen any of the Star Wars Rebels episodes either, they introduced the Bendu character during that, played by Tom Baker of Doctor Who fame. And the Bendu was a creature that wasn't a Jedi or a Sith. He wasn't a gray Jedi either, but he wielded both the dark side and the light side of the force in a more complete way that made him way more powerful. And I think that eventually in the distant future of the Star Wars universe, Grogu will become something closer to the Bendu, even if he doesn't become a Dai Bendu himself. Dai Bendu is the name of the order that the Bendu belong to. It's a big Easter egg for that, which is actually a big Easter egg for George Lucas's original treatment for the Star Wars universe. For those of you wondering if Grogu would ever go back to pick up Yoda's lightsaber, like would Luke still let him have it? I'd rather see him create his own lightsaber eventually that's just totally different. Even though he doesn't have the technical knowledge in how to actually build a lightsaber, Force Ghost Yoda or Ahsoka Tano could teach him how to do that. If you saw the deleted scenes for Return of the Jedi, they also have the deleted scene of Luke Skywalker building his new green lightsaber. He didn't get special plans on how to build that. He got some help from Force Ghost Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda. So they can do the same thing for Grogu in the distant future when he eventually creates his own lightsaber. Also, Ahsoka Tano would know how to build a lightsaber. She could tell Grogu how to do that too. So there are other Force users out there who are still alive that Grogu can still learn new things from while he's having adventures with the Mandalorian during Season 3 and beyond. But if you have any more questions about what Grogu was doing with Luke Skywalker, how long he was with him, how much training Luke Skywalker unlocked in him, just write it below in the comments. My full Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 1 video will post next on Wednesday. It'll be Wednesday every single week and there'll be 8 episodes just like previous seasons. Everyone click here for my Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 1 video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that and click here for all my Mandalorian videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and this is the way.